Ugh, warm. I don't know why it's warm all of a sudden. Hee hee, here we are again. Right, okay. Beep, 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 all the new, new and approved, Chester, all that stuff. Subscribe, the usual, right. This is an interesting one. Um, another article. I'll, I'll stick the thing in the doobers as I normally do. Um, share this if you can. I keep saying about this. We need to retweet and share, st not just my stuff, but generally. Retweeting and sharing stuff is how you get the old algorithms dusting up to get to, to get you up the, uh, the old listings, you know. I've joined Twitter Blue as well. Let's see what happens. Right, this is all about the equality laws being used to restrict free speech by universities. So we're back into the academic again, the old academia, who have screwed up so right royally. I spoke to you before about things like the Stonewall boondoggle that is the Equality Index, but they've got other stuff like Athena Swan on the race charter. So the universities are grasping this stuff again. They're going in again with the same nonsense that we've seen with Stonewall. They can't help themselves. It's like some kind of far-left circle jerk. They're absolutely bloody deranged, if you ask me. So, Chief Executive of the Office for Students, this is very interesting because I've been saying this for a while, of the Office for Students said promoting a particular protected characteristic to the detriment of others may be harmful. Now, I've mentioned to you before, you know, that the first thing that we need to do when it comes to getting this crap gone is, in universities, is to, is to find affinity groups based on identity or race or whatever it may be, like, you know, the trans society or the, all that nonsense. They need to go, right? If you're an organisation like Mr. Smith's, you know, Mr. Smith's uh, Retail Emporium, right? OK, Mr. Smith's Retail Emporium. Get the idea? Two and a half thousand employees and they set up a trans group and a gay group. And a what you're doing there is setting up an affinity group and you're ele elevating one group of protected people, not that gender identity is, but people going through the process, gender recognition is, you're elevating them. How can that be equal? In the Equality Act, it can't. Right, oh, well, this is the BAME. No, we're not having it. No, no. See, affinity groups. Pronouns, affinity groups. There's the two biggies. You want an affinity group? No, and sorry, women, that includes you. Right, and it includes us men. No affinity groups. You want an affinity group? Run it outside of work. Don't bring it into work. OK, remember, the Equality Act protects us at work and in the provision of goods and services. It doesn't protect you if you're in the street where I can call you, you know, a moronic man or a moronic woman or whatever, or the fact that you might be disabled, but just an arsehole. Right. So but it protects us all equally, all of us. And those affinity groups, when you raise them above others, you are, I, I think you are breaking equality law. And the Office for Students here is essentially saying that's what they're up to. OK, so universities must stop equality law being used as an excuse to restrict free speech. The head of the higher education watchdog has warned. Now, this is because of them elevating protected characteristics. Susan Latworth, chief executive of the Office for, Office for Students, who we like at the moment. We'll see how you pan out, Susan. We like her at the moment, right? Um, said that too often universities are curtailing free speech by lean, leaning more fully into their equality duties than the law supports. Now, this is fascinating. Leaning more fully into their equality duties than the law supports. Now, Kemi Badlock wrote to the universities going back some time ago now saying, don't overdo it on the public sector equality duty. The public want value for money and you're overdoing it. We know they're overdoing it. Government spent £7 billion, that report the other week. Right, we know they're overdoing it. So they're saying... They have a legal duty under the Equality Act 2010 to eliminate discrimination, harassment and victimisation on the basis of characteristics, age, disability, religion, sex, gender reassignment, sexual orientation, that kind of thing. However, the Office for Students will warn universities on Thursday, this coming Thursday, it's gone Thursday now, I think, that policies which promote a particular protected characteristic to the detriment of others may amount to unlawful discrimination. <laughs> Gotcha by your short fuzzies. Ah, oh, that's glorious. I'm going to read it again. It's so glorious. Universities, the policies which promote a particular protected characteristic, <laughs> FNAR, right, protected characteristic, to the detriment of others, which it must, by very nature of existing, do, may, may, we'll see, amount to unlawful discrimination and could have the effect of curtailing freedom of speech. Well, well, well. Colour me, as surprised as I always am when I say colour me, that I'm surprised that we set up a priestly class 
and the priestly class gets to do what they want. It's glorious watching this stuff. I really enjoy this. I hope you are too. It's like a good glass of red wine. Miss Lapworth, we like you, Miss Lapworth. Keep going, Sue. Miss Lapworth said that the new guidance drawn up by the regulator highlights the importance of universities really understanding the nature of that free speech duty alongside the equality duties that come with the public sector equality duty itself, which says that they will promote equality of opportunity and they've been promoting equality of outcome. Ask not for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. <laughs> ah, this is delicious. Right. Too often we see universities not properly understanding the legal framing and perhaps leaning more fully into equality duties than we think the law supports and we are concerned that this is acting to curtail free speech. An insidious grip of self-censorship is what follows from this. The priestly class become the untouchables. You know, we're back to spotlight again, aren't we? University administrators still claim freedom of speech on campus. Isn't a significant issue? Well, they would, wouldn't they? It's always the bureaucrats that let the ship posts keep going, isn't it? It's always the bureaucrats that do it. Um, it is, said Miss Lapworth. Goodness me, a declarative statement. Oh, Susan, we like you, right? She said, we think that the issues around free speech are too complex and too important to reduce to a small tally of events that don't go ahead or a small number of high-profile, no-platform speakers. She's calling for a very high resolution, uh, high altitude. High altitude, low resolution, look at this. Free speech. That's it. This is glorious. Glorious, I tell you. Right? Um, there has been... The regulator's guidance for vice-chancellors will highlight a recent survey at King's College London. Over a third of students felt that free speech is very or fairly threatened at their university. The students are telling you it's threatened. Find these critical social justice lunatics with their power and oppression narratives and get them out. Expel them. What the hell are you doing? Get them out. They're dangerous. They're parasitical. They are the thieves of time and they're there to cause trouble. That's it. They are agent provocateurs. They are. It's a prevent issue. Let's get prevent off the bench and let's really get looking at these people for what they are. It then talks about the fact that we have history with this because of Kathleen Stock, who you remember, was forced out of her position. And Miss Lapworth has also said that universities would also be shown evidence by the think tank that many academics appear to be falling victim to an insidious grip of self-censorship. You ain't kidding. I know dozens of them who are terrified to speak. Academics aren't the most brave people in the world anyway. Right? And they're terrified to speak. Cosy place academia. That will change, I think, in the next few years. But it's a cosy place, academia. We fund it well. You know, and we're glad to because you do a fantastic job when you do it well. But you've got to get these nutters out, including the lecturers who are nutters. Close down the gender studies department. Anything that begins with the word critical, get started and get it done. Miss Lapworth then continued. Universities have important legal obligations relating to freedom of speech and academic freedom within the law. They do, including obligations that relate to their policies and processes. I hope that 2023 will be the year when those looking at our sector will see university leaders proactively focusing on their compliance with these obligations. Not until you get a few of them fired, Susan. Then they'll pay attention. There's that lovely quote somebody had on the way. I think it was one of the, one of the American presidents. When you've got them by the balls, their hearts and mind will follow. Or it was a general. It sounds like a general. It? it sounds more like a general. The warning comes as the regulator and universities prepare for new duties under the Higher Education Freedom of Speech Bill, currently passing through Parliament, which will require them to actively promote freedom of speech rather than just secure it. <laughs> right, it's a good start. It's been watered down a bit. Claire Fox is all over it, but it's been watered down a bit. Then we've got Dr Holly Chandler, Head of Policy at the Russell Group, said... The Office for Students is right to highlight the importance of free speech and academic freedom. And university leaders are already playing an active role in, up, in upholding these values on campuses around the UK. I don't see it. If you were going to play an active role in upholding free speech, you have to get rid of EDI. You have to get rid of EDI. You have to get rid of EDI. You have to get rid of affinity groups. You have to get rid of all this BAME nonsense. You've got to get rid of all this queer nonsense. You've got to get rid of all this trans nonsense. You've got to, you've got to tell men not to, to leave women alone. And you've got to tell LARPing men to leave women alone. Right? And you've got to tell LARPing girls to leave gay men alone. You can't be doing this if you've got EDI in 
your organization. It's not EDI, it's DAI, but you get my drift. Yeah? Talk to somebody who knows. First thing about EDI, first rule of EDI, people need to be left alone. And you're not prepared to do that. I don't believe what Holly Chander has said. So we'll see what happens when Holly Chander goes up against Susan Lapworth, won't we? WWF. Chandler versus Lapworth. <laughs> Nothing like watching the elites tear each other's eyes out. Right, so last year, senior leaders across... The, she, this is her again, Holly. Last year, senior leaders across the Russell Group reiterated their commitment to defending and maintaining free speech in a joint statement which underlined this as a core value at the heart of the university's purpose as academic institution. Can't find the statement. If somebody knows what the statement is or where it is, let me know, because I can't find it. I just simply can't find it. It's not there. Anyway, so university is back on the agenda, OK? It's now 2023, people. It's now 2023. Let's start having some expectation that these organisations are going to put their houses in order and get this trans nonsense and power and oppression narrative grievance gerbils out of everything. Um, 2023, the year when the reckoning comes. That's what I'm hoping for will be because these things take a long time do you know how long it took to overturn the law against homosexuality in this country 100 years that's why it's so important we don't let this shit get into law god knows what you know what's coming around the corner for scotland i don't know but that's enough of this for today thank you so much um happy new year all right it's great to speak to you all once again and i hope that you've had a lovely break come on back on the horse let's go <laughs> see you soon